Welcome to Sparks Adventure, where we go beyond the beauty and take a closer look at the science and history behind national parks. Today, we're at White Sands in southeastern New Mexico, in the largest gypsum dune field on Earth. It's really shocking to see 275 square miles of pristine white sand in the middle of this desert landscape. Yet here we are, surrounded by glistening gypsum dunes. The U.S. National Park System consists of 419 parks, each one with an incredible story. Let's take a look beyond the beauty. Let's take a look at White Sands. About 12,000 years ago, warmer temperatures, brought on by the end of the Ice Age, melted snow and ice on those mountains, bringing water into this valley, creating a giant lake. As the lake dried up, the area went from grassland to desert. So how did we go from a dry lake bed to miles of white sand dunes? If you don't know, ask. That's right, we're going back to the lab. We are visiting New Mexico State University to speak with Dr. Brian Hampton, professor of geological sciences. He was kind enough to help us tell our Sparks Adventure story. Dr. Hampton, can you help us explain how White Sands came to be? Yeah, White Sands is a pretty unique place. There was a really special sort of set of geologic phenomenon that were going on in this time. And it gets back to that old geologic formation that was about 270, 280 million years old. Basically, we had glaciers and snowpacks sitting on that up in the mountains, started to erode. It also put some of the gypsum into solution. So you're carrying water down the mountains into the valleys with gypsum dissolved in it. We start to take a look at about 10,000 years ago, we started to see climate changing. Things were getting a little bit drier. We started to evaporate out all this water that would pond up in these lakes, these glacial lakes. Um, and as we do that, you basically free up this gypsum to start getting moved, transported, blown around, and basically forming the sand dunes over the last 10,000 years or so. What are the qualities of gypsum that allow it to form these sand dunes? So, you know, in geology, we have thousands of different minerals. Gypsum is one of these pretty unique minerals um, in that it's basically made up of calcium, and sulfate, so it's a calcium sulfate, but there's also little bits of water in all of this gypsum we see right through here, actually H2O water. Um, the other key part about gypsum is that it's very, very prone to eroding, and so it can erode away very quickly, it dissolves very quickly in water. The melting ice brought with it gypsum, down from the mountain and into the lake. When the lake dried up, large amounts of gypsum crystals formed spars, which were worn down by fierce winds into tiny grains, which then gathered into these dunes, forming white sands. About how long does it take for the dunes to form? So white sands, the actual dunes were forming from about 10 or 11,000 years ago, and they're still forming today. And so we still have these rocks up in the mountains, and we still are seeing that same system where you're pulling that gypsum down into solution, and it's basically making dunes today. And so about 10,000 years, but really it can occur for as long as you have the available gypsum and the available transport, and really the available dry environment and the wind to blow those dunes. So now we know, gypsum came down from those mountains as a solution in water. Drier climates then evaporated the gypsum into sands, which then formed these dunes. We know that the dunes were made about 10,000 years ago and that the process continues even today. Now that we know how this place came to be, let's take a quick look at the history of this area. Aside from these glistening white sands, this area is also famous for its role in the development of the space race, the nuclear bomb, and cutting edge missile testing. During World War II, a top secret mission called the Manhattan Project worked on the development of the nuclear bomb. It was first tested just 65 miles from here at a place known as the Trinity Site. This area was also key to the United States efforts to reach outer space. During the space race in the 1960s, scientists and engineers at White Sands Missile Range trained astronauts and tested the rockets that would send humans into space. 
Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. After World War II, the military presence in the area continued. Just a few minutes from the park is White Sands Missile Range Museum, where you can learn about missile technology. And just a few miles east of White Sands is Holloman Air Force Base. The base is home to fighter jets, unmanned drone projects, and much, much more. For years, the F-117 stealth fighter was based here. White Sands is amazing. The science and history of this area make it a place like no other. Subscribe to Sparks Adventure and come along as we explore the most beautiful places on Earth. Into the past